In planning a writing project, I find it's often useful to use mind maps to brainstorm ideas. I've used them to organize projects for my technical writing job, and I've also used them in writing fiction to spawn ideas by creating word associations, by following thoughts through whatever planning stages I have, following character traits, you know, just putting down my ideas on paper while I work through the details. A mind map helps you to work out ideas because you can think visually and think in a non-linear way. You write down whatever comes to mind and put it in the right part of your map to create the right associations. You can draw lines, you can draw pictures, um, you can you can plan plan your project, you can create outlines. There's really you're really only limited by your own imagination. With the mind map, you can think your own way, you can follow your own style. There are many ways that you can create a mind map. The most common are probably to use to just write it out on paper. Uh, whiteboards also work well because you can erase more easily. Same with the chalkboard, but you know chalkboards can get kind of messy. And there are also several free and for pay applications on computers and tablets. I'll be showing one of those in a few minutes. Um, and the important thing is to find a method that's comfortable for you and to understand the advantages and disadvantages of each of the the media that you can use for creating your your mind map um, th those advantages and disadvantages are totally up to your own style it's just it just depends on what helps you to think through your ideas and to plan your project our sample project today will be to begin planning a retelling of the nursery rhyme jack and jill We'll be using the FreeMind um, program for Windows, and we'll just, we're not going to go through the entire project because that could go forever, but we're going to talk about some of the basics, just enough to give you an idea of some of the things that you can do. To begin this demo, I have already set up a few basic things for the project. Um, we're calling the project Jack and Jill. Uh, we know that there are two characters named Jack and Jill. Um, let's make this character thing a little more interesting by putting some more people on there. There we go. Um, you can use colors. You can do all kinds of things. I mean, free, free Mind isn't the most robust mind mapping tool out there, but it is free and it's not. It's pretty easy to use. Um, anyway, we have Jack and Jill, and we know that Jack has a crown, because later on he's going to break it. Um, we also know of one location, and that's a hill, and up on that hill there's a pail of water. That's really all we know about the story. But now we're going to have to start to brainstorm, because that by itself isn't going to make a very interesting story. So let's start with the what-if questions that are the, probably the most important tool to anybody who is writing. So let's just say, I mean, why is that water up there? Well, it's possible that there's a spring with some fresh, with fresh water. That would make complete sense. It's not very exciting, but it's logical. Um, so, but what if it's more interesting than that? What if aliens leave the water. Well, why would they do that? Well, I happen to be a fan of Twilight Zone and I like that episode to serve man, so maybe the water will nourish people so, so they taste better. That's pretty interesting. Or Maybe these are just, you know, good happy aliens and they know that there's a there's a drought going on and they want to be helpful. 
So anyway, you know, you can just follow that train of thought with the what if thing. Well, we know also though that if aliens were leaving water, then we also need some aliens over here on the character map. So let's add the aliens. You know, the, there's probably more than one because you know every good flying saucer has to have at least a leader. And let's give him a name. Let's call him Glorp. So that seems like a good alien name. And now the leader's not likely to be the one to be taking care of the water. There's probably a water officer. And we'll call him Flizbit. I mean, if we were really doing this to really truly plan the project, we'd probably put down another node beneath the leader and beneath the water officer with different name ideas, and then we would explore each of those characters in a little more detail. Same with Jack and Jill. We need to know, for example, why Jack has the crown. And we need to know whether Jill is Jack's sister, or his mother, or his aunt, or his girlfriend, or, you know, just what her relationship is. That's all stuff that if we wanted to take the time to truly use a mind map to plan this out, we could add all of those things. And we'd probably want more than one location. Like the Jack and Jill are trying to take the water somewhere, so we'd have to figure out where it is that they're going to take it. Are they taking it home? Are they taking it to some other place? Maybe Jack and Jill are the aliens, and they're taking the water to their spaceship. Um, I didn't draw all that out on the mind map just for the sake of time, but you get the idea. You use the mind map to put down whatever ideas you have. There's no such thing as a stupid idea. Well, there is a stupid idea, but not while you're mind mapping. You, you decide later which ideas work and which ones don't. Which ones are smart, which ones are stupid, and which ones will help you make the story. The, the goal is, as you're writing down all of this stuff, a story starts to emerge in your mind. And once you have that planning done, and once you have the idea of the story that you want to create, then you can start writing. You can use your mind map as as a guide, but of course you don't, just like with an outline when you're planning something, you know, it's a guide, but you don't necessarily have to stay with it. You might have other ideas, your story will probably diverge from the plan. So that's how that's one way that you can use mind mapping when creating a project.